the Indianapolis native who died at the hands of the so-called Islamic State was adopted. Abdul Rahman Kasich's parents, Ed and Paula, released a statement proudly acknowledging that fact yesterday, and his birth family is starting to speak out. We'll have more on that in a few minutes. But first, as Hoosiers mourn the death of Kasich, a full review of the United States hostage policy is underway. After ISIS released a video earlier this week showing they'd killed Kasich, the White House revealed President Obama had already asked for the country's hostage policy to be examined. Barbara Harrington explains what it could mean for Americans taken captive and how the Hoosier state is coping with Kasich's death. For six weeks, Ed and Paula Kasich did everything they could to try and convince the so-called Islamic State to release their son. They reached out to the militants on social media and put out a video statement pleading for them to spare Kasich's life. We implore those who are holding you to show mercy and use their power to let you go. But they didn't let him go. Early Sunday morning, ISIS released a video showing evidence of Kasich's death. A while ago, we were informed that our beloved son, Abdul Rahman, no longer walks this earth. ISIS captured Kasich in October 2013 while he was delivering medical supplies in Syria. The United States government has remained silent on any efforts they might have taken to try and secure his release. But the beheadings of Kasich and journalists James Foley and Stephen Sotloff are causing the country to re-examine its policies on how it deals with hostages taken overseas. The White House says the Department of Defense, State Department, and FBI are all involved in the review. This review does not include a reconsideration of a long-standing policy of the United States government that ransoms should not be paid to terrorist organizations that are holding hostages. President Obama won't budge on the issue of ransom because he, along with several other politicians, argues negotiating with terrorists would only encourage them to capture Americans. We don't want to put uh, other American citizens at even greater risk when they're uh, around the globe. Uh, and that knowing that uh, terrorist organizations can extract a ransom from the United States if they take a hostage only puts American citizens at greater risk. Experts don't expect any dramatic changes to come out of the review. But as terrorist organizations like ISIS evolve, they say the country's hostage policy could use some updating. I think everybody would agree that we have to at least strengthen our ability to use special operation forces, if the situation is right, to go in and try to uh, release an American captive. <laughs> While Washington considers whether to make changes, Hoosiers who showed their support for the Kasich family during Abdul Rahman's captivity are coming to grips with the loss of one of their own. And just as Abdul Rahman turned to Islam for comfort while in captivity, the Kasichs are relying on their faith to help them work through their grief. Our hearts are battered, but they will mend. The world is broken, but it will be healed in the end and good will prevail as the one God of many names will prevail. Throughout the long weeks they waited for word of their son, the Kasichs say they received overwhelming support, evident by the hundreds who showed up to vigils in Abdul Rahman's honor. The families not only felt the support of this congregation, but as well as the Islamic community and you know, worldwide people telling them stories of ways that he has made a difference, either physically and in person, or just his story has impacted their life. In June, Kasich's parents received a letter from their son that a freed captive managed to smuggle out when he was released. In it, the 26-year-old wrote, If I do die, I figure that at least you and I can seek refuge and comfort in knowing that I went out as a result of trying to alleviate suffering and helping those in need. Friends and family say Abdul Rahman made more of a difference than he could ever imagine. When we were at the uh, prayer service in Fishers at the mosque, when his father was speaking, I leaned to his mother and I said, your son went to Syria to make a difference, but he's also making a difference here. It has begun to open dialogue between the Muslim community and the Christian community. Um, and just people are um, seriously thinking about what they're, what they're called to do. So that's his legacy, is that it's kind of a kick in the pants to the rest of us.
Community support is continuing to pour in for the Kasich family. Earlier today, dozens of people attended a Muslim funeral prayer service at the Al Huda Center in Fishers. Another prayer service is planned for tomorrow at the Indiana Interchurch Center. And the family will hold a Muslim Christian service in honor of Abdul Rahman at Butler University Sunday. Reporter Barbara Harrington joins us now for more. Boy, this is just so heartbreaking. And now we hear actually from the birth parents. Uh, that's exactly right, Joe. Yesterday, Ed and Paula Kasig released that statement acknowledging that, yes, they had adopted Abdul Rahman. They said that they were very thankful and grateful to his mother, Rhonda Schwint, who chose them to be his parents, but also said that Rhonda and her children are also grieving. He has a sister, Jaina, and a brother, Sam. Mm. I wonder if he had any contact with his birth parents during that time. Well, the Indy Star did talk to them, and they reported that he did, once he turned 18, reach out to his birth mother and his siblings, and he actually started a relationship with them, and they formed a really close bond over the past several years. Did the family say anything on how they plan to remember uh, Abdul uh, uh, Rockman? Well, to them, he will always be Peter. That's how uh -huh. they remembered him. They said he was a proud Army Ranger, but most importantly to them, he was a goofy older brother, very loving. So, uh, of course, they're struggling very much right now as well. And Rhonda even wrote on her Facebook earlier this month on November 11th that, quote, I want my son Peter home safely. So uh -huh. just a heartbreaking situation. It's so hard to watch these both of these families go through this. And then how about that organization that he started? What's going to happen with that? So that organization was called Sarah, and the family spokesperson for the Kasig family said that they ceased operations after Abdul Rahman was captured in Syria last October, and that they really cannot resume uh, operations or really exist without him leading the way because he was such an integral part. He founded that organization. Yeah. Barbara, thank you very much for your reporting on this.